trying to get the goats to come outside. I'm trying to convince them that it's a nice day to come out. Although we've got a bit of blue sky now. After quite a wet start to the day. Any joy? Maybe if we keep walking. <laughs> Good morning folks, how are you doing? Welcome to another farm vlog at Tappanoff Farm here in northeast Scotland. Rosa and I, as I've just said, are doing our best to encourage the goaty girls out for some grazing so that they don't just sit in the byre all day scoffing on hay. So yeah, it's been some pretty awful weather of late. We've had some very strong winds which have blown all the beautiful autumnal coloured leaves off of the tree so suddenly we're looking much more wintry. So we've got some very short days kicking in. It's getting dark about 4 p.m. The sun's coming up about 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, but we've been keeping ourselves busy. We've been cutting hedges, which I'll show you in a bit. And um, we've started work on developing the tree nursery over in the market garden, which is great because we would love to get that established before we get our first bit of snow. And how are the goats been doing? Uh, the goats are good. Um, they've been out quite a lot. Um, they're not generally a kind of animal that people say enjoys the wind very much, but uh, no. well, they haven't really had a choice, but they've been, they've been out on our kind of, uh, in our, what we call our hay meadow, because we cut it once for hay, um, where the sheep are right yeah, now. Yeah, the sheep are up there now. Yeah, um, so they've been up there, which is where I'd like to take them today. And it's kind of some of the best last grazing for them. Mm. So that's been really nice. We've not had tons of rain in the last kind of wee while, even no, though the wind's just, been pretty bad and it's yeah, been cold. Yeah, just windy and, so. and cold. Yeah, but uh, so it's meant that they can be out really grazing. Um, they're, unfortunately, the veg from the garden and the fresh cut tree and things mm. are all pretty much running out now. Um, so finding those patches of grazing for them is like increasingly important just so they've got something other than hay and we don't really ideally want to dip into the tree hay too much uh, yet that we've got stored because it's still not really as much as we'd one day like to make so we want to kind of eke out this phase of winter before we really go into the depths of it and the tree hay will be that real lifesaver for them so um, yeah, so just trying to like scrabble and find those last bits of things for them to eat. But other news being that we've decided to get Mandy into kid in the next couple weeks. So she is going off on a holiday uh, at a friend's um, uh, farm. They've got a boa buck in for a few weeks. Uh, so we're going with Mandy to make use of him as well called Mr. Studley. In the last video we were drying, talking about drying off yeah. all the goats, which we've, we've done, they're yeah. all, all dried off now. That was Heli, one of the white British salmons. Yes. So why have we decided not to get them in kid? Why Mandy first anyway? Mm, hmm. Obviously, huh. Questions. I know, I mean, it's really been a big kind of uh, decision-making process and a huge learning curve for us anyway. We've never actually got large livestock into calf or kid or anything on this farm before. Um, so there's that side of it, it's all quite new to us. We don't have a trailer, for example, so really organising that is difficult in itself. Um, when it comes to the goats and the actual dairy, my idea had been to just, well, actually to get all three goats in kid this year, um, or just the two white goats, which is why I dried them off. Well, it's actually not why I dried them off. Really, it was partly for a rest for us. I wanted to give them a rest. I didn't want to... Um, yeah, milk them through the winter basically and I just thought it would be a bit easier on their bodies um, if they're in kid, uh, if they weren't also you know producing milk during that time and leading up to that time of um, getting in kid so that was just the thinking behind it really but also just to give us a bit of a break we've never had a break from milking for a number of for three and a bit years so yeah, just to have that first winter really of just really focusing on looking after the goats aside from the milking side of it. So that was the thinking. What we decided to do now is get Mandy and Kid this year um, and the two white goats, the two British Sarnans, Mandy's British Toggenberg, two British Sarnans, our newer goats, younger uh, in Kid uh, next year. Um, and that will mean that they kid spring 2023. And what that will mean is next year we will have milk from Mandy, but it will just really be enough milk for the two households here um, and also just to make a little bit of soft cheese and some feta maybe. Um, but it won't mean that I'll have that constant kind of making lots of 
hard cheese all the time through the year. Um, and that is something I really enjoy. It's not that I don't want to do that, but I would really like to spend a bit of time um, refining some of the systems around the goats. Uh, we've got a few plans. We'd really like to construct a new goat building. There's just lots of things that we'd like to do with the goats that I feel that that takes up quite a lot of time. And it's something that I'm not in a massive rush to do and perfect. I would really like to spend more time learning that. We would really like milk for the house. So Mandy on her own will be just enough for that. And it will just give me that extra time to get a few things in place, learn a little bit more about making the hard cheeses, get a consistent uh, aging environment, still need to perfect that side of it. So there's a few things I just really want to have more time to do. Also, the other main reason is that uh, this will be Mandy's absolute last chance to get a kid, really. Um, she'll be turning 13 soon, so she's an older goat. Not that she seems it. I think she's quite sprightly, but um, I think this is probably the last time she'll get getting kids. So some new life on the farm, but without the kind of chaos of doing all three goats. And it will also ease us into um, getting one of our animals in kid, in lamb. We'll talk about the sheep in a minute. Um, on this farm and dealing with all of that um, because it's not something we've done before so yeah just pacing ourselves and that's that she's gonna hopefully have a great time with mr studley and uh come back a uh, pregnant lady just like rosa <laughs> see if anyone notices that <laughs> rosa is gonna try and encourage them see how that goes rosa is the goat whisperer as a lot of you in the comments like to call her she does have quite a knack at speaking to goats so we're going to see the sheep in a minute, as Rosa just alluded to. We're going to be bringing in a tup, a ram. And there we have it, a little bit of gentle persuasion always helps with a goat. We're just going to walk these girls up to their grazing, which is always a nice thing to do, especially when you've got the sun coming out like this, which is nice to see after such a dark start to the day. have been carrying on with their rotation around the grazing just enjoying this new patch we moved them on just a couple of days ago from this grazing strip and they'll just make their way through the silver pasture here won't be long before we have to give them a few handfuls of grain at the beginning at the end of the day because the grass is getting less here uh, but they're all right for the moment time of year the goats enjoy eating the fallen leaves so they've no longer got the opportunity to browse the leaves that are on the trees because they've all fallen off but they really do enjoy picking them up off the ground and eating them like a snack Rosa says it's always like they're eating a pack of crisps crunching away We've got the sheep up next to the goats up here in the hay meadow below our shepherd's hut. Sheep down below the shepherd's hut couldn't be more perfect. Hello girls. Uh, we brought the sheep up here um, just a few days ago moving them from the north field um, to make use of the grazing that we have here. Um, because we're bringing in a ram to do his job here with the girls. We wanted them to have some good nutrition on the lead up to that visit, um, as that's meant to help with their fertility, giving them a good diet before the tup arrives. So the friend of ours that we're taking Mandy to visit there, Billy, is going to be dropping off a ram here, a Shetland ram. These are Shetland sheep, Shetland ewes. And so we're going to just do a bit of an exchange. We're going to, they're going to drop off their Shetland ram and then put our Mandy goat in the back and take them, take Mandy back to their place to meet their Billy and leave their ram here for a bit of a holiday with our Shetland ewes. 
Hey Christina, I think you'll love that. Hopefully he'll enjoy his time here and do his job. Hi. Hi. The goats all right? Yeah, they're good. Yeah? Yeah. Should we head down to the hedge? Yeah, these guys yeah, and look at the work yeah, that we've been doing down there. Yeah, so one of the things you guys might have noticed if you watch the vlogs regularly is that we've got these massive beach hedges around our cottage. And they've been here for quite some time. I'm guesstimating 50 years plus. We've got a hedge to the south of the cottage and our kind of home garden, which we've um, cut regularly. But uh, there's a hedge to the west of the cottage that runs up past the kitchen garden that we're going to be bringing back into life next year that we haven't cut in 10 years since we moved here and it's this big <laughs> it's higher than the house <laughs> it's massive so it's not just a hedge trim no that's been involved here it's, it's tree felling it's tree felling many many trees and here's the hedge that we've already started cleaning up so you can see what a difference if i just come down here um, to show you the view of the house, the cottage. This is where Rosa and I live. So yeah, you can see this hedge used to be the same height as the one that's towering over Rosa there. So quite a difference and we've been slowly clearing away all the brash but we've got a lot that's fallen into our front garden and we've been having to just pile it up here and there but of course we've got plenty of uses for this brash we, any that had leaves on it still, we were feeding to the goats and we're making different piles because we're, we've got plenty of dead hedges to make. So yeah, have a look through our back catalogue, you will see these dead hedges dotted around. You'll see us walking past them and driving past them in the BCS. They're a fantastic way of making use of brash, um, which if you're working in a kind of forested environment like we are, it can quickly pile up. So this hedge is pretty much been taken care of, I'll we'll have to tidy it up a little bit more. Um, it looks pretty brutal, but that will regenerate in the spring and start growing again. We're going to have some lovely firewood from this. We've, it's yeah. beach, so it's a very good substrate for growing shiitake mushrooms on. So we're earmarking some of the straighter, longer trunks for inoculating with some shiitake mushroom. You often see this uh, um, corridor where Rosa walks the goats every morning, coming past the, the end of our cottage. You can see it's all here and this is where it starts getting very tall. If you look back, we use Rosa for scale. Um, yeah, it's, it's towering <laughs> above us as the house, so <laughs> blocks a lot of light. I mean, blocks obviously, wind. yeah, blocks a lot of wind, yeah. which is great, um, but it blocks a lot of sunlight yeah. and it's starting to come over onto the roof, which we definitely don't want in case yeah. it knocks any tiles off. And um, with, with kind of the increasing number of trees that we have around and these different systems mm -hmm. a lot more wind is blocked by those so yeah. it is rendering this hedge which will have been incredibly useful with bare fields yeah, on the other side ago. yeah it's actually less and less useful to us basically um, so portions of it we may end up completely removing mm -hmm. but a lot of it will keep it's lovely habitat I mean yeah. any like old established hedge is no brilliant we're very habitat. lucky to have it we're going to make doorways through to connect yeah. parts of the back gardens behind the house here with some of the other areas that we've been developing mm -hmm. and um, reduce the height for sure yeah. and then potentially remove some sections it's amazing how much the design of your property can be dominated by an existing structure like a fence line or a hedge line yeah. they really can be really can stop you being able to come up with your own designs because you've got this hard line predefined boundary yeah that's just almost like yeah just as conceptual as it is like a physical boundary mm. and you it makes you, it very hard to cross it yeah you literally can't cross it but also in your mind you don't ever think about crossing it so you can't necessarily see that two places that are right next to mm. each other are actually connected yeah. or could be connected. Yeah. To, to find the confidence to start cutting in. And um, we've done that in the past. If we walk up the hill here towards the old kitchen garden, which we're gonna reinstate next year. And this hedge used to continue uh, until we decided to cut through it. And this has changed everything, everything <laughs> on the farm because we've now established a, a track which comes along here past the small polytunnel and we can now drive the PCS and walk through 
to get through to the silver pasture areas of the west field of the farm and through and up to our new areas of forest garden. So just doing this simple thing of cutting a hole, removing two or three of these large um, trunked beeches out of the hedge changed everything mm. with regards to the design of the farm yeah. and the usage. Our daily pattern of how we walk around to do our chores So yesterday Rosa and I began work on our tree nursery. If you watch a couple of vlogs back, you'll hear our plans and reasons why we want to start a dedicated tree nursery. We started working on the design of the garden, pegging out the orientation of the beds. And we've decided to put these beds on contour as close as we can. So we used our A-frame. And if you're not familiar with how to find contours or use an A-frame, um, I really recommend you check out the Weedy Garden YouTube channel. Head on over to there. He's done a great tutorial on um, building swales, but also how to build and use an A-frame to find the contour of the land. And that's what we've been doing out here. We've used an A-frame several times throughout our life here on the farm. Um, from marking out tree rows that we wanted to put on contour, um, to marking our vegetable beds. So here we are where we are developing the tree nursery. This was a vegetable plot that we created um, in 2020 and we've decided it's far better to be used as a tree nursery and this is an area that we want to start um, propagating plants for ourselves first and then any surplus that we generate can be sold. So you can see all these little bamboo pegs. So this is what we were doing yesterday. You can see the slope of the land it's very gentle, but we've really noticed that some of the vegetable beds that aren't on contour or off contour in the market garden, we really feel would have benefited from being across slope. And what are those benefits? Well, for one, it's far easier to walk across slope than it is up and down. So as a gardener, I always prefer to put beds across slope um, because pushing wheelbarrow loads of heavy compost up and down hills isn't fun. When our beds or tree rows or ditches are on contour then they're going to collect water and that water will then slowly percolate back into the ground rather than running off the site. That's not hugely needed in our climate we feel um, because we have a very constant level of precipitation and the ground is often wet. What we're really working to achieve here with our contour beds is to stop our soil and the nutrients being washed away when we do get these heavy bouts of rain and because we've we have seen after heavy rain over in this plot behind us for instance which the beds are sloping in the direction of the slope we found that we have lost quite a lot of soil off of those beds and so as an experiment we're going to try putting these ones on contour we're halfway through marking out these beds, it's quite difficult to see. We've been walking that A-frame across the slope and that tells us where is level, so where the contour line is. Um, and we've been marking that with these pegs in the ground. Some of these rows of pegs represent the beds that we're going to be planting trees into and some of them represent the pathways. But we'll be carrying on with that job, just marking out the paths. Um, then we'll be uh, cultivating the soil here. Now on the whole we try to adopt a no-dig approach to cultivating vegetables here but this plot is very compacted. Um, there was a huge big pile of rubble and sand left by the previous owners here which we had to remove. So the soil isn't its best. Now I don't think rotivating it is going to help that but what I want to do is to alleviate the compaction that is here. It's, it's very hard ground. This will help um, identify the beds because the ground will rise from being decompacted um, and we're going to bring in a large amount of compost um, wood chip to then put on top and we won't bring the rotivator in ever again if we weren't needing to plant into this soon maybe i wouldn't rotivate it but we are we're going to be using this very soon to plant uh, trees in that we need to move out of the market garden so I've got to be able to get roots into the ground and at the moment it's it's very hard. We're going to use a bit of tillage, we're going to do our best to repair the soil by adding lots of compost uh, and mulches. So hopefully by bringing in those composts 
that will help kickstart the biology to help us with the problem of the compaction. So exciting times developing our new tree nursery, bringing the sunlight in by cutting down these shady beech hedges and yeah, sending our goats off to meet the billy, bringing in a top to meet our sheep. Um, so plenty happening. Hope you've enjoyed today's update. I hope you're all well out there. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you soon. See ya.